My reign as a Jeopardy champion lasted almost 35 minutes. This was coming, like the waiting room of the of the vasectomist, and I know that's not what he's called. I know there's like a fancy word, but if you leave, I have nothing left to live for. What I call home, for most of the people in this audience tonight, is a place that's probably very unfamiliar. So I'm from Newport News, Virginia. And, and if anyone is familiar with the layout of Newport News, Virginia, I live in the southeastern part of Newport News, Virginia, and, and, and that's what we call the hood. That's where gentrification has happened. That's where the reality of a lot of systemic issues that have perpetuated themselves for a long time come into this very real sense in which you see houses with wood in the windows that would probably never be renovated. Where you see a church, liquor store, church, liquor store, and they were in community. That's my home. And I'll tell y'all something. It gives me joy to think about because I was raised there. It's really interesting. My father was a janitor at a museum. My mother was unemployed. They had just had my, they had my sister for the, like about a year and a half. They had just had me and were moving into a house in the worst part of my city. Fast forward 21 years. I'm in the same space. My sister just graduated from George Mason. She's now a missionary going to Kenya. My little sister had been born. She's at Roanoke College. My mother went back, got her degree, and now she works as a caseworker. My dad, oh, my dad. My dad went back to college, got his accountancy degree, went on, and now he is the assistant controller of finances at Christopher Newport University. We're a middle-class family now. I mean, that's cool. I mean, we can clap about that, right? That's great. But we're still in this neighborhood. And so it, it, it kind of seems like a contradiction, like why? But I remember asking my parents about that, and my parents, they were very adamant. They said, Darius, this is home. This is, this is where we were raised. This is where there's need. And this is where we know how to provide that. And I'm driving around this neighborhood, smiling. I go to my cousin's house. And I pull up. My cousin, his name is Trayvon. He's my running buddy. I pull up to my cousin's house. If you are familiar with the hood, right, there's only one way to play music. Big bass. So, I'm busting my parents' speakers. Don't tell my mom, she'll probably see the video later. So I'm busting my parents' speakers, bumping this bass, and my cousins, they hear it and they run out. They run out, they're like, Darius is home, Darius is home. My cousins come out, my play cousins come out next door. The cousins that I don't even know whose kids they are come out and they're yelling, Darius. I'm like, I've never seen you. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> who are you? Everyone comes out and it's just like in this little space, this community and it's free. I take my cousin, I say, yo, Trayvon, we have to go see my grandma. And he's like, I saw her yesterday. I'm like, we gonna see her again, because I'm home. <laughs> we get in the car and we drive, we drive down the street, it's this road called Hampton Avenue. It's one of the major uh, intersecting streets in Newport News, Virginia. Um, and we're driving down the street, going towards the other major intersecting street that kind of goes uh, north. This one kind of goes west. And so we're heading, we're heading west towards the street that goes north that's going to lead us to the highway. And we're bumping. Boom, 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 boom. I love Kendrick Lamar. He's a really awesome artist. OK, OK, some Kendrick fans. This is a song called All Right. I love it. And it's like, it goes, we gonna be all right. And it's just like, it's just like a theme song and we're just like jamming and we're just like, we go be all right. And Trayvon's like, Darius, why aren't your hands on the wheel? I'm like, oh, we go be all right. <laughs> hey, don't worry. And we, <laughs> we pull up to the red light at the intersection of Jefferson and Hampton and it's a red light. 
it's natural, right? You, you, you don't see anyone coming. You stop. Hopefully you stop. You stop. You look both ways. And then you, you, know, you, make, that, you make that right turn, right? Simple. And I'm, I'm, I stopped. I looked. Looked at my cousin. We going to be all right. Made the right turn. Woo! Cop car. Whoa. I immediately turned the music off. I pulled into a parking lot that was uh, right next to a local convenience store in which I saw there were people. I pulled into the parking lot. I stopped, I parked, I took the keys out of the ignition. I put them in the cup holder next to me. I told my cousin Trayvon, I said, Trayvon, put your hands on the dash right now. I put my hands on the dash after I take my license and registration and put them on my lap and I sit there. The cop pulls up behind me. He stops and me and my cousin, I told him, I said, keep your eyes on the ceiling. In my mind, I'm trying to think about what's going on right now. I'm trying to sing Kendrick, but my thoughts that come up, rather they were of this variety that they very well may be my last. This was a moment I felt was you versus me, life versus death. I had no time in that moment in my mind to tell the officer that I come from a middle class family, that I attend a prestigious academic university and I thrive there. I had no time to tell him about my dreams, that I wanted to be a US senator one day. I had no time. Time merely gave me my hands at 10 and 2 my license plate and registration visibly in my lap, my keys in a visible place next to me and my eyes on the ceiling. That's all time gave me. And out of my peripherals, I look in the rear view mirror and I see the officer, big, hefty, white man. And he's strolling cool and blue up into my car. And my hand, my eyes are like this, but I see the officer look inside my car. I look at the officer, he looks at me, and it's as if he was struck by me. I remember this. He staggered back as if he was being hit by this moment about what he saw, because in that moment, he saw me. This part really confused me. It wasn't a lot of time to think, but I do remember that officer take a few moments to himself outside my car, my hand still gripping the wheel. I remember that officer, I remember that officer trying to hide his tears. He was tearing up in that moment. I remember him taking the walk back to his car to compose himself, wiping the tears from his face. My hands never left, mind you. All I can think was, what type of officer cries on duty? <laughs> and I remember him walking back up to my car. his uniform and badge fully present this time. And he says, your license and registrations, please. I take my left hand and I reach on my lap, I hand it to him, put my left hand right back on the wheel. He walks back to his cop car. He gets in, runs my stuff, he comes back to my window and he hands it back to me. I take it, I put it on my lap. Stick my hands right back on the wheel and I'm looking at him and he says, son, you know why I pulled you over. He answered the question for me because I wasn't speaking. He said, it's because you made an illegal right turn at that light, you missed the sign. The sign says you cannot make a right turn, but I'm gonna let you go. And I remember looking at him, again, confused. he walked away. 
but my hands were glued on the wheel, my friends. Because I was so uncertain about what had happened, what was happening, that I was not going to allow my hands to leave the wheel until I saw that cop car leave. And when he pulled away, he left. I took a deep breath. because there were no other words that needed to be spoken. Darius Williams. <laughs>